Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick and I know that this video is a little bit of a surprise because I said in the last video that I wasn't going to be able to film a video. I film on Saturdays and today is Saturday, but the original situation was that I was supposed to work uh, on this Saturday and because of that uh, I wasn't going to be able to film. I was going to delay the video a week and have one for you next week. Um, but the situation at work changed. Uh, I don't have to work Saturday this week, meaning that I get my my regular weekend which is great but i also get to film this video for you guys so hopefully uh this is a little bit of a nice treat for people who watch the channel um and may maybe this is just a, a regular scheduled upload that that helps keep the channel a bit more consistent which is what we're looking for today the topic for today's video is going to be what i talked about in the last video as well i talked about some of the gameplay or mantras that game developers have uh the one that we're going to talk about today is this this notion of gameplay is king uh, Ludo narrative dissonance is also there. That's used by consumers. Um, that's something that I don't really want to talk about because I think uh, people have a general understanding of what it is, and also I think it's overused. I, I think the term is a little bit diluted in its meaning now. Gameplay is king, however, is still very much used, uh, and on, that's on the dev side. And there, there's a few games that I want to bring up that relate to this topic on both gameplay is king, and then also when gameplay took a back seat to other things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this game dev mantra, gameplay is king, talk about a few games that use it, talk about a few studios that live by it, and my opinions on the matter and on the philosophy behind it. Because I work at Epic Games and my main project is Fortnite, uh, obviously gameplay is king is kind of what we do. We don't have a story really. We've tried to do some story stuff recently, not a lot. Um, it hasn't really fleshed out quite yet, so I can't really speak to anything about that. I hope people who play the game are at least a little bit excited by what's happening in the game. Um, I, there's some. I can tell you that there's some cool stuff happening. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything else besides that, but it is it is kind of cool. It's some cool stuff coming down. So if you play the game, look forward to that. If you don't, look forward to some headlines about it, I guess. Gameplay is king is what we live by. We're a battle royale. Of course we want the game to be enjoyable from a mechanic side. We want building to feel great. We want gunplay to feel great. We want loot to be rewarding. We want the map to be interesting and like diverse. And we want all of that to, you know, be the main feature of Fortnite. And that's what we work towards. Because of the genre, gameplay is king is like effective. Gameplay is king is what we want. There are some genres that I don't think this works that well in. One of them being narrative single player stories, which I also touched on in the last video. Uh, personally, for me, The Last of Us was a game that was, there was nothing unique about its gameplay. There was nothing that was drawing me in. It was just a, a cover based shooter, which at the time was like, you know, kind of falling out of favor. Uh, when it was released, but I, I, I've played other cover-based shooters that I enjoy much more than The Last of Us, primarily Mass Effect just in general, but Mass Effect 2 is what is the biggest, my favorite of the trilogy, so I'll use Mass Effect 2 as my point of comparison. The difference between Last of Us and Mass Effect's gameplay is that Mass Effect has these abilities that you can use, and it has squad members that you can also direct and use their abilities. Last of Us, you have Ellie, who is a character. Um, she doesn't do much in combat, at least from what I can remember and what I've watched recently to, to brush up on the game. Um, and Joel doesn't have, a, you know, he, 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 he's just a guy. Um, and this does ground the story. I'm not saying that it doesn't. But once again, that's the story. The gameplay itself is uh, just a cover-based shooter that's, uh, not not terribly special. Uh, there are some stealth mechanics that are kind of neat with the clickers uh, and like the shiv crafting and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's pretty standard, all things considered. What makes The Last of Us stand out is the story, the characters, the world, everything that's not really the gameplay. People don't look at The Last of Us and say, "Wow, that gameplay was so incredible. That's why this game is great." No one says that. People look at The Last of Us and say the gameplay is okay. But what really carried the game was the story between Joel and Ellie, the world that they live in, and the characters they interact with. That's really what that game is about. Mass Effect, you have this great uh, gameplay system where you can like build abilities and like combos uh, with certain characters, and you have these other weapons that you can use that just feel like incredibly powerful and 
all this stuff. And then you have squad mates that also have these great abilities. And, and, and then it's backed up by this star-studded cast of characters on this story that is so impactful. I, I don't really understand uh, why people don't give Mass Effect 2... Like, why some people don't think Mass Effect 2 is the best in the trilogy. I think Mass Effect 2 is, by far, the best game in the Mass Effect trilogy. I don't think it's even close, really. But that's just my opinion, and we're not here to talk about Mass Effect 2. Although we could, we won't. So, what does Gameplay as King have to do with those games? These games, Gameplay as King took a little bit of a backseat. Naughty Dog and Bioware, specifically Bioware does this a lot. Bioware and Naughty Dog, they focused on story. For these games they focused on character development they focused on the world they focused on everything that wasn't really gameplay they refined the gameplay as much as they could but the gameplay was just a tool for them it wasn't a king it was a tool that's the difference they were able to elevate their game to the next level through other aspects of the game which is how every game should be treated gameplay is king only matters if gameplay is the only feature battle royales are one of the only genres that that can happen in. So let's talk about the flip side then. Let's talk about a game where the gameplay was immaculate and the gameplay felt awesome, um, but the the rest of the game, like the story and the characters, weren't incredible. I'm going to point towards a game that I personally love, which I know is contradictory to everything I just said, but I want to point it out anyway because I feel like it's important for me to give some context in this case and also show my personal bias because everyone has it. I'm no different. I'm not like an objective reviewer. I'm a subjective person who plays video games. Game in question is Prototype. Prototype the original. Prototype is a power trip game. It is a game that is focused on making you feel like the edgiest badass in the entire universe. And it succeeds every time I play it. It is such a great game to run around and play in. The story isn't that great. The characters, not so interesting. Alex Mercer is like Edgelord Supreme. His sister is like a side character whose motives are weird. The doctor is kind of just there. Uh, and then the military people you see in cutscenes only, and then you just kind of, they're gone. Um, but Alex is like the only semi-interesting one. In Prototype 2, James Heller, I guess, uh, but, like, even then, it's not that good. Uh, I think Prototype 1's better still. But Prototype focused on gameplay. And it worked for that game. At least for me. For me, I loved Prototype because I played it when I was an edgy little boy in middle school. And it absolutely enthralled me. Being able to run around this huge city and leap off of buildings and jump down and pull out this huge blade that comes out of my arm and just decimate at my enemies. It's it's great. You also have this ability to run around and just... You're not restricted. Like, in Assassin's Creed, if you kill a civilian, it's said that that doesn't sync with your memories, which is a good gameplay uh, mechanic, I suppose. It's a narrative link. So it's a way to dissuade people to not just murder everybody. In Prototype, you don't have that. In Prototype, you can just go around killing any and everybody, and the game doesn't punish you. The game encourages it, even. It's how you re restore your health. You grab a character, you consume them, you gain your health back. You also gain a little bit of meteor that you can use uh, to use your special abilities, which is like Big Tentacle Attack, which is like decimating and it destroys almost everything. So the game encourages you to just do whatever the hell you want, which is great. I love that. So Prototype falls into the category of gameplay as king, despite it being a single-player game. I don't think it falls into a single-player narrative. Now, I know there's a big... There's not that much of a difference between those. Single-player... Because I noticed in the last video... if you, I noted in the last video, I should say, that I said single-player games are narrative experiences. That was a broad, generalizing statement. There are some single-player games that aren't narrative experiences. Prototype is one of them. Prototype is what I just call a power trip game. The whole point of the game is to make the player feel like an absolute badass. They're supposed to give them absolute power. They're supposed to make them stronger than everybody. Just let them decimate everything. There's a few other games that are like that. Uh, they're typically RPGs, uh, and they are also characters that are like superpowers. Um, if you want a game that's kind of power trippy, I, uh, I think Batman... Arkham, uh, Arkham City, and Arkham, 
Pro probably Arkham Knight. Eh, probably not Arkham Knight. Arkham City, probably. Arkham City is kind of like that because you're Batman, so you feel like an absolute badass. You can counter everybody. You can, like, break guns out of people's hands. You can grapple them. And then Spider-Man. Superhero games are a great way to give players a power trip fantasy. Prototype went the anti-hero route, where Alex Mercer is just this bioengineered weapon, and he just decimates everybody. And it works both ways. Except in Batman, it has a decent story because the characters in the Batman, his rogues gallery, are phenomenal. Let's not talk about Mark Hamill because I could talk about his portrayal of the Joker for literally years. But let's not talk about that. And Spider-Man's story is Spider-Man's story, retold a different way, but it's still very good. Not the point. Prototype. Prototype uh, is a game that I like, and I know that that's contradictory to what I said earlier. Um, but it falls under that category of gameplay as king. So, with those two examples, Last of Us and Mass Effect 2, and then also Prototype, they're on the separate side. Uh, game, one is gameplay is king, Prototype, and the other is gameplay takes a little bit of a backseat and story, narrative, and world shine through a bit more. That's Last of Us and Mass Effect. That's a really long title, but I don't know how to abbreviate it. So we're going to keep it that way. If you guys have a suggestion how to do it, leave it in the comment below. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video or enjoying this topic, I recommend you subscribe. I try and put out videos every week. I work a full-time job, so I try and keep it consistent. Um, there could be days that I don't, though. But I, I try and keep it consistent. Mondays at noon is when I normally upload everything. You guys can give this video a like to show me you like it. Comment down below if you have any topics or suggestions for the next video. Uh, and then subscribe so you can keep up with everything. Also, my Twitter and social media is linked down below. I'll also put the card on screen at the end of the video. So what's my opinion on Gameplay is King? Uh, I think Gameplay is King is an outdated phrase that is slowly changing. Um, I think the games industry has already noticed this. It's already noticed that the, the, the trend of Gameplay is King isn't working that much anymore because gameplay is so standard nowadays. There's multiple engines that you can use that are open source. There's a bunch of different baseline projects that you can use. Gameplay no longer has to be king because gameplay isn't all that there is. Back in, you know, the older days when the games were just coming out and, you know, people were still figuring out the art form and still trying to perfect the craft, of course gameplay meant was king. You need to get a way to draw people in. Unreal Tournament was one of the biggest things for that. Unreal Tournament, Quake, Doom. The stories in those games weren't there really doom i guess a little but not a lot and the game just focused on gameplay and it worked it per skyrocketed the games industry into the next level which is what we wanted now we have other tools that we can work with we can build these incredible worlds these detailed fleshed out worlds we can build these characters that have these powerful stories and moments and interactions and then we also have just atmosphere atmosphere goes a long way atmosphere can elevate your game to the next level just off of that a game that i use for that is uh dark souls one the atmosphere the soundtrack especially like the firelink shrine soundtrack i sit there and i feel calm and then you walk five feet out of firelink shrine and the game just switches it rears its head at you it's like no 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 no, no. you can't go here great game first off. Anyway, those type of games don't have to focus only on gameplay. They have other tools they can use to elevate themselves to make up for a lack of gameplay. That's what Last of Us did. Gameplay's king is kind of dying. It's not going to completely die because there are some games that are battle royales and, you know, multiplayer only games, and those games gameplay's king does need to be a thing. And there are also other titles that also kind of need that. Um, not so much anymore, but they still exist. I hope Gameplay is King takes a bit more of a backseat. I want to see more stories. I want to see more characters. I want to see more environments. I want to see people and uh, developers use these tools to bring their games to the next level without sacrificing gameplay. And I also want to see people break... Uh, make great gameplay without sacrificing the other tools 
at their disposal. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like to let me know you did. Comment down below what your opinion is on the matter, and also if you have any suggestions for the next video. If you guys want to keep up with the other content on this channel, I recommend you hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out, helps me know that you guys are enjoying the content, helps me know that I'm engaging with people, and it also is just a way for you to keep up with the content. If you guys are interested in following me on my social media stuff, I've linked it down below. My Twitter card is right here. And I do uh, link my Instagram down there. You guys don't have to follow it at all, although you should, because I do post on Twitter somewhat regularly. Not a lot, but somewhat regularly. I notify when my content goes live. And if I ever do live streams in the future, Twitter and Instagram will be the first places to know. Instagram I don't use that much. I want to try and use Instagram more, but the quarantine is like really shitting on me and I don't really know how to use selfies. So I don't really know how to use uh, camera tricks. I'm not, uh, I've never took pictures of myself before. So that, that's actually, this is way too much info for this video. What am I, what? Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate the time that you give me. Time is something that every human has a limited amount of. And the fact that you spend, even if it's just a few minutes on my videos, means a lot. Thank you all. I hope you guys are staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, when this all blows over, uh, I'll have some new type of content for you. I have some stuff planned that I want to do. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Until that time, we're going to keep doing these videos. And we'll probably do these videos after quarantine. But I will see you all next week. Thank you for watching.